everyone, Armoured Pants here and I have another video for you in the American line, this is the Tier 70 T71 and as always we have a complete guide starting with Blitzhanger.com where we'll have a look at the tech spec. Now, um, as always we're going to have a look at the tech spec in detail but you know, I think moving on to Tier 7 in a light tank like this is a big challenge. It's a significant different um, ball game you are in effect as we said before a sardine in a shark tank there's so many big guns out there so you need to be prepared for that and we'll try to do our best in this video to make you so prepared now have a look at the tech spec firstly let's say this is a great light tank it really is a super little tank and it's great fun to play to maximize advantages I would run coca-cola because it gets that view range up to 296.3 meters which is really good You've got two gun options, both are 76mm autoloader guns. The top gun gives almost 400 plus uh, damage points per minute, so therefore I would use the top gun, get it as quickly as possible. Top gun has better shell reload too, it's 1.5 seconds versus 2 seconds on the lower tier gun. 13.87 second magazine reload and you get 480 plus burst damage with that. 160 uh, millimeters of pen with AP, 200 with heat, and HE gives you 38 if you run gun rammer. But you may want to consider running um, calibrated shells too to increase that. Muzzle velocity is 975 meters per second, going up to 1268 meters per second with supercharge. And interestingly, all shells have the same muzzle velocity with that top gun, so shell management is very easy. I would run vertical stabilizer. I would also, because you're going to fire a lot when moving, and I would also consider using uh, calibrated shells because the magazine reload is not that much affected with the calibrated shells. And you get that extra pen. 7 degrees of gun depression, 20s of elevation, which is pretty decent. It's not as good as other American tanks, but it's pretty decent and it gives decent gun alignment. And the 7 degrees of gun depression, mm, it's lower than other American tanks, but it's still manageable. Now, um, this tank is really fast. It does 64.4 kilometers per hour. It does 23 in reverse, so it really is an agile little tank. It really gets around the map. And it's a tiny tank, it's a very small target, and if you're moving that quickly, even though there are big guns out there with their long aiming time, it's difficult to hit when you're moving. It also has very good power to weight ratio. This is different to other um, American tanks who have a poor power to weight ratio. This is really fast and it's fast from a stop start. This thing shifts. Now looking at the armor profile here, we can see that you need to have gun, good concealment, which it does have because it has no armor. And has 227 meters of concealment at 295 meters view range. What does that mean? It means that a tank with 295 meter view range has to get in within 227 meters of you to spot you up. And that's pretty good. And um, that, of course, if you're not firing or not moving. So when you are, uh, but if you're in soft camo or, hard, uh, sorry, if you're in using soft camouflage, soft cover, then that even goes up even further. But, um, uh, like a tank with really high view range in um, tier 7, tier 8, has to get very close to you to see you. So therefore you have good concealment numbers and that really is the key to playing this tank because you don't have any armor as you can see here as we saw looking at the 3D imaging. There is no armor, right? You're going to be penned by everything. If you threw a stone hard enough, it would probably go through the armor on this thing. So therefore, what are the tactics? Well, the tactics in this tank are pretty simple. You use that speed, you use that view range, and you use those concealment numbers to get out, spot, um, spot up the enemy, relay that back to your team. Then you can unload 480 plus damage into them in just a few seconds, get into cover, reset your camo, repeat, rinse, repeat. Um, if you're in doubt as to how to play a light tank role, what you should be doing for your team, have a look at the light tank guide again on channel. Because even if you know what you should be doing, it may be good to have a refresher. Because, you know, this tank has a lot of attributes, but it has no armor and you can be one-shotted by many things. Now, at this point, I'm going to take a time out and we're going to have a tutorial, uh, a recap of the tutorial on using auto loaders. Um, you may have uh, seen this in T37, but if you're using a single shot, you may not have uh, paid too much attention. You kind of have to use it now. So let's have a recap and let's have a re-look at the autoloader mini tutorial, which will give you all the essentials that you need to know 
for playing a auto loader effectively. Now, um, I'm going to use a graphic image here to maybe describe the difference between an auto loader and a normal um, gun which reloads at the same time uh, per game. Um, this linear uh, depiction here, this straight line, the green line, depicts the impact of a normal gun throughout the game. So a normal gun, in, uh, a tank with a normal gun, single shot gun, engages the enemy at more or less the same uh, level throughout the game. So therefore it's linear. Obviously there's different timing between a reload and you can affect it with adrenaline, but more or less it's linear. You can engage at the same level throughout the game. An auto loader is different. An auto loader engages the enemy significantly more than a single shot um, gun when it has a full magazine but significantly less while it's reloading. So therefore you have times of increased activity where you engage the enemy and decreased activity. So therefore you go on these peaks and troughs, you engage the enemy in peaks and troughs, highs and lows. And you need to be aware of that. There are periods of the game when your magazine is reloading that you cannot engage the enemy, you cannot do damage. And therefore you have significantly decreased activity. Uh, to a tank or a gun system which is firing consistently a single shot and you need to be aware of that and utilize the game time when you're up to its maximum and utilize the decreased activity game time to do other things move spot uh, cap bases etc so it's a different type of gameplay and you need to be aware of that you are uh, playing in peaks and troughs whereas with a single shot um, gun um, mechanism, you're engaging in a more consistent level. Now, here's some of the key points about playing auto loaders. You need to continually count your shells. Be aware of the shells in the magazine. You don't want to run into a bra with only one shell, right? You need to run away and reload. You need to stay safe while you reload. Um, you know, when you're um, reloading your magazine, you can't engage or do damage, therefore stay safe. There's no point being out in the open. Use this inactive time, those troughs um, that we looked at in the graph, to reload. Um, and when you're reloading, do things like base capture, move to engage, spot and scout. You can't fire at the enemy, but use that time to do other things which are advantageous to you and your team. Remember to keep the shell icon open always. Why? Because you can double tap to reload. What does that mean? When you tap on an open shell icon, and it doesn't matter whether you've fired one or two rounds, it will reload automatically. This means you don't have to fire, which is an amateur mistake. You often see guys who are new to um, using auto loaders. They have one round left in the chamber in the magazine, and they decide to fire it off so they can get a reload. You don't have to do this. Firstly, that wastes rounds, which wastes credits. It breaks your camo, which is very important to a light tank. So therefore, don't do it. All you need to do is tap on the open shell icon and it reloads the magazine automatically. And reload as often as you can in the game to make sure you have max burst damage as often as possible. This is essential. So even if you've only fired off one round, you still got two in your magazine, but you're gonna cap a base. You know that's gonna take 10 to 15 seconds. Hit the shell icon and reload so that when you recapture that base, you come out and you have a full magazine and you're ready to inflict max damage. Now, back to some gameplay. And um, we're gonna have a look at a supremacy game on Canal. Uh, and as always, what I do is I check the setup and therefore, I haven't checked it, I decide I'm gonna go to D. Um, you can see the speed of the tank, not just its top speed, but also how quickly it reaches that. Significantly difference to other American tanks um, in that it has very good power to weight ratio. We see that in action now. Magazine is fully fully loaded, and I have a 1.5 second um, uh, firing time between shells. Now I'm using my speed and my camo number, playing to tank strength to get into a position, spot up the enemy, here we go. Here's our first customer, Shea Pants today. And we see that um, I've captured the base and I've unloaded 436 burst damage into him. Nice start to the game, right? Base captured, enemy spotted, damage done. Can't ask any more from a light tank at the beginning of a game. It's doing exactly what I should be doing. 13 seconds later, plus another 4.5 seconds, and I've done 948 damage points to that poor T3485. I almost cleared him off, and there he goes. He's gone. 
and that is just a few seconds into this game base captured enemy spotted huge amount of damage done almost a thousand damage already and that's what this tank can do now again classic light tank play here i've come up on the flank of the enemy i am resetting camo while i reload and now this is just a turkey shoot i have all these guys facing opposite me clear off one clear off two i'm back in reloading resetting camo and that is just really a perfect situation for this tank yeah I've flanked i've opened up fields of fire clear off another one i'm gonna put um uh, uh, he rounds into the nash horn really racking up the damage here almost 2k damage done we're not even two minutes into the game that is the firepower of this tank almost another kill there ally takes him i don't mind we're clearing off guns look at that we are two minutes into this game and we've cleared off five of their tanks now i'm using the speed of the tank again to relocate and open up fresh fields of fire and we have only two tanks left in the game uh, on the red side the game is almost over and that is essentially down to this little t71 he got out there he spotted up he's captured bases he's done damage and we've got two heavy tanks left and they don't they're not going to stand a chance is2 comes along he does a good job clears off one of our guys but look at this here now i am coming up on him and he does not stand a chance he is caught out in the open first you get a 200 max roll on him 537 damage burst damage and my allies clear them off. Just look at this COD replay. Um, some of you in the comment section and contact me on Facebook uh, through World of Tanks WOTB gameplay and the Facebook page uh, often ask me if I can give tips, etc. on Circle of Death. Circle of Death, as I always say, is very simple or it can be very complicated. All you need to do, the only tactic you need to know is to keep the enemy going away from you that's it if that's not pointing at you you're going to be successful it's one golden rule and that's all you need to know um, and you saw it there against the is2 he really didn't stand a chance he's got slow traverse you know and he's really coming up against one of the most agile tanks in the game now this tiger here tries to smash me but just look at that look how small a target this is i have a needle stuff there squeeze through the tiniest gap and now the tiger is for a heavy tank really good traverse right it's almost it's almost like a helium in terms of its traverse but look even how he struggles now this guy does the right thing he backs up so i can't get around him i only have the side to aim at but even he can't get a shot on him. That's the speed, the agility, but also the small size of this tank. And there you go. Um, almost 3.3k of damage and four kills. And that game was lightning fast as well, right? It was, all, it was over before it began. And that's how effective this tank can be. Play to its strengths, guys. Small, agile, fast, um, great view range, good camo, camo numbers get out there spot up the enemy and um, uh, relay their positions to your team find out what those big guns are and then um, just really uh, reap reap the whirlwind because this thing and there you go reaper badge and um, high caliber you can get all sorts of badges in this the badges you should be getting should be aiming for in a light tank are uh, patrol and scout because if you do get those, then it shows that you're really doing your job effectively. You're playing the light tank role as it should be played. Let's have a look at game two here on Canyon. Again, I checked the setup. Um, the setup on this map is not so important really because when you're in a light tank or if there's no um, light tanks and medium tank, you gotta go and spot B. You have to spot B or if you're playing in the counter battle, that hill where B is in the supremacy map of course you can win the game without doing that but believe me you've a much better chance of winning the game if you spot up B because it tells your allies where the enemy is going now this poor Dracula here he is having a very bad day and he's gonna just his day is just gonna get worse and worse now this again is a perfect start to this game 
I've spotted up the enemy, spotted up B, and I've already unloaded my bag in, and I got three shots to count. So good start to the game. Um, I unload one into him, and then I just snap off shots. I don't want to spend too much time on target. I don't. Obviously, it's great if they go through, but I don't want to spend too much time on target. I haven't spotted up all of the enemy, so I don't know where they all are. So therefore, spending too much time up on the top of that hill to make sure I pen uh, the VK could end up in me getting seriously damaged. So you're better off just snapping off the shots I did there. Didn't go through. Uh, you play your cards and you take your chances. Don't always go through. Now, uh, this Dracula, as I said, his day is just getting worse and worse because he doesn't have gun depression that I have, and I keep smashing him. I've got seven degrees of gun depression, um, and he just cannot uh, get shots onto me, and every time he pops up, I'm smashing him. Again, uh, this VK is leaving a charmed life. Um, again, I don't want to spend too much time up on top of the hill exposing myself, so I'm just gonna snap off the shots. If they go through, good. If they don't go through, it's fine. Again, look at this poor drag. And again, this is idle needle stuff. Smash one into him again, and he is not having a good day. And eventually, this VK runs out of luck. He is a cat on his eighth life. Um, now, here you can see what I'm talking about about um, hitting the shell icon to reload. Uh, didn't have to fire off that last round, just hit the shell um, icon and I reload saw that shot whiz by me there again that is one of the great advantages of this tank it's so small that if you keep moving and as i was doing there when i was capping the base just rocking backward and forward it meant that that shell missed me it's a tiny tiny target you saw that when uh, we were in the uh, jig and the reel with the tiger in the last game now i'm telling my um, allies what i'm doing i'm communicating with them i'm telling them i'm driving to base a communication is a key part of blitz doesn't matter what tank you're driving and so often um, even experienced players but especially inexperienced players don't communicate they don't say what they're doing at the start of the game during the game they don't communicate and your teammates if they have no idea what you're doing it's very difficult for them to either support you or to make the appropriate actions now by the way um watch what i do here i drive straight into this rock why I'm watching the mini map and um, so there you go even experienced players like myself and um, we make mistakes but totally noob that straight into the rock and um, paying too much attention to the mini map not looking where I'm going um, now I we are three two down uh, so I've conserved my uh, hit points so I'm gonna go and take out these two tanks I'm gonna lose hit points doing this I know I am but I think it's essential that we get rid of them uh, now you see this guy here in the IS, he's calling me a loser. I don't know why, um, probably because um, he hasn't seen what I've been doing during the game. But anyway, uh, nonetheless, um, we'll come back to him in a second. Uh, now, I'm going to clear off this VK and you can see the maneuverability and um, the size of this tank make it very difficult. He couldn't get another shot on me there. If I was in a bigger tank, he would have. He gets one into me here, but by that time I've reloaded, pop back out and then it's game over bam so okay i lost a lot of hit points but uh, i was happy to do that oh, i would have preferred not to lose so many but i got us from a 3v2 to a 2v1 situation i also know i have a black prince over there he is notoriously difficult to pen he's a tough customer he is face hooking this t29 i come help him out uh, unload a full magazine into the back of the t29 and Whoop, he sees me, I pull back, um, try to snap one off, but the Black Prince takes him out. And there you go. Um, by the way, here we go. See this guy? He's back again. Sorry, Harry Potter. Um, and fair play to him. By the way, he also messaged me after the game and said, apologies, uh, he wasn't watching what I was doing. And um, uh, well done, great play, good game. So fair play to him. Um, and like, I mean, like, of course, we all get frustrated when we play. But it's very rare that you see guys like him who actually admit their mistake and then actually a message you after with something pleasant to say. And more often than not, you get messaged and you're told to die of cancer or you hope everybody you know gets AIDS and stuff like that, which is pretty horrific. Now, again, um, a good example of gameplay uh, with this tank, doing the right things. 
By the way, if you look here, you'll see that I only did uh, just over 2k of damage, um, 4 kills again, but I actually got more XP in this game than I did in the last one. 12 3 3 versus 1 1 9 9. And again, that goes back to what we always say in this channel masteries are not about damage, they're about proactive actions. Spotting, scouting, um, uh, allowing uh, capturing bases, um, allowing your uh, teammates to uh, do damage. Uh, and you can see here, I got sharpshooter again, but I've got patrol duty. That's like an extremely important badge. Uh, as I said, patrol duty and scout are the badges that you should really be aiming for, uh, more so than mastery badges in a light tank. And again, I think that game is a great illustration that did the right things, utilize the strengths of the tank. Now let's have a recap. So uh, this is a really great light tank. I really liked, I really enjoyed playing it and it's perfect practice for the auto loaders and the higher tiers as you go up. Um, it is a big jump going into tier seven because there are a lot of big guns there. You had a sardine and a shark tank. Um, so don't be, don't, don't, don't be worried if you struggle at the start. Scout, spot, find those big guns because you can be one-shotted. And I was a couple of times when I was making these videos. Use the top auto loader gun, load up and heat. You will need it if you're up tier, even if you run calibrated shells. Remember, there's a 13.8 second reload for the mag, but you've only got 1.5 second reload between each shells. It has great power to weight ratio, as you saw in the gameplay, and it's better than most US tanks, and it gets around the map so well. Traverse is really good. It's an agile, excellent brawler, as you saw uh, against the Tiger, against the IS, etc. Gun alignment is good. Utilize that. You saw against the Dracula, Use, utilize in that seven degrees of gun depression and use your speed view range and concealment they are a winning combo they are the tools you need to play a light tank well if you're up tiered it's not such a bad thing because in a light tank you don't want to get hit anyway so you know you need to you play the same tactics when you're up tiered anyway uh, but make sure that you spot and relay positions if there's a rim box or something on the other team he will one shot you so help yourself and help your team by finding him use that superior view range concealment and speed to find those big guns and stay safe so cheers mush thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed it i hope you found it useful and i guess all that remains for me to say is pants off